Hey guys, thanks for coming back to All Booked Up. Let's keep reading The Tale of Despero, where we left off with a very, very gruesome plan in store for the Princess P. Let's see what happens when the rat and Mig are up to no good. Chapter 39, Missing. The sun rose and shed light on what Rascaro and Migri so had done. And finally, Despero awoke. But alas, he awoke too late. I haven't seen her, Louise was shouting. And I tell you, I wash my hands of her. If she's missing, I say good riddance. Good riddance to bad rubbish. Despero sat up. He looked behind him. Oh, his tail, gone. Given over to the knife where the tail should be. Nothing but a bloody stub. And more foul play. Gregory dead, shouted the cook. Poor old man, that rope of his broken by who knows what, and him lost in the dark and frightened to death because of it. It's too much. Oh no, whispered Despero. Oh no, Gregory is dead. The mouse got to his feet and began the long climb down from the shelf. Once he was on the floor, he struck his head. He stuck his head around the door of the pantry and saw Cook standing in the center of the kitchen, wringing her fat hands. Besides her stood a tall woman jangling a ring of keys. That's right, said Louise. All the king's men down there searching for her in the dungeon. And when they come back up, who do they have with them? They have the old man, dead. And now you tell me that Mig is missing? And I say, who cares? Despero made a small noise of despair. He had slept too long. The rat had already acted. The princess was gone. And what kind of a world is it, Miss Louise, where princesses are taken from right under our noses and queens drop dead and we cannot even take comfort in soup? And with this, Cook started to cry. Shh, said Louise, I beg you, do not say that word. Soup, shouted the cook. I will say it. No one can stop me. Soup, soup, soup. And then she began to cry in earnest wailing and sobbing cry. There, said Louise. She put a hand out to touch Cook, and Cook slapped it away. It will be all right, said Louise. Cook brought the hem of her apron up to wipe her tears. It won't, she said. It won't be right ever again. They've taken away our little darling. There ain't nothing left to live for without the princess. Despero was amazed to have exactly what was in his heart spoken aloud by such a ferocious, mouse-hating woman as Cook. Louise reached out to touch Cook, and this time Cook allowed her to put an arm around her shoulder. What will we do? What will we do? wailed Cook. And Louise said, shh, there, there. Alas, there was no one to comfort Despero, and there was no time anyway for him to cry. He knew what he had to do. He had to find the king. For, having heard Rosciro's plan, reader, the Despero knew that the princess was hidden in the dungeon. And being somewhat smarter than Migri so, he sensed the terrible unspoken truth behind Rascaro's words. He knew that Mig could never be a princess. He knew that the rat, once he captured the pea, would never let her go. And so, the small mouse, who had been dipped in oil, covered in flour, and relieved of his tail, slipped out of the pantry and passed the weeping ladies. He went to find the king. Chapter 40, Forgiveness he went first to the throne room, but the king was not there. And so Despero slipped through a hole in the molding and made his way to the princess's room, where he came upon the mouse council, 13 mice and one very most honored head mouse, sitting around their piece of wood, debating important mouse matters. Despero stopped and stood very still. Fellow honored mouse, said the, very, the most very honored head mouse. And then he looked up from his makeshift table and saw Despero. Despero, he whispered. The other mice at the council leaned forward, straining to make some sense of the word that the head mouse had uttered. Pardon, said one. Excuse me, said another. I didn't hear right, said the third. I thought you said Despero. The head mouse gathered himself. He tried speaking again. Fellow members, he said, a ghost, a ghost. And he raised a shaking paw and pointed at Despero. The other mice turned and looked. There was Despero Tilling, covered in flour, looking back at them, the telltale red thread around his neck like a thin trail of blood. Despero, said Lester, son, you have come back. 
Jesper looked at his father and saw the old mouse whose fur was shot through with gray. How could that be? Jesper had been gone only a few days, but his father seemed to have aged many years in his absence. Son, ghost of my son, said Lester, his whispers trembling. I dream about you every night. I dream about beating the drum that sent you to your death. I was wrong. What I did was wrong. No, called the very most very honored head mouse. No, I've destroyed it, said Lester. I've destroyed the drum. Will you forgive me? He clasped his paws together and looked at his son. No, shouted the head mouse again. No, do not ask the ghost to forgive you, Lester. You did as you should. You did what was best for the mouse community. Lester ignored the head mouse. Son, he said, please. Jespero looked at his father, at his gray streaked fur and trembling whispers, and his front paws clasped together in front of his heart, and he felt suddenly as if his own heart would break in two. His father looked so small, so sad. Forgive me, Lester said again. Forgiveness, reader, is, I think, something very much like hope and love, a powerful, wonderful thing, and a ridiculous thing, too. Isn't it ridiculous, after all, to think that a son could forgive his father for beating a drum that sent him to his death? Isn't it ridiculous to think that a mouse could ever forgive anyone for such perfidy? But still, here were the words Despero Chilling spoke to his father. He said, I forgive you, Pa. And he said those words because he sensed that it was the only way to save his own heart, to stop it from breaking in two. Despero, reader, spoke the words to save himself. And then he turned from his father and spoke to the whole mouse council. You are wrong, he said, all of you. You asked me to renounce my sins. I ask you to renounce yours. You wronged me. Repent. Never, said the head mouse. Despero stood before the mouse council and he realized that he was a different mouse than he had been the last time he faced them. He had been to the dungeon and back up out of it. He knew things they would never know. What they thought of him, he realized, did not matter. Not at all. And so, without saying another word, Despero turned and left the room. After he was gone, the head mouse slapped his trembling paws on the table. Mice of the council, he said. We've been paid a visit by a ghost who has told us to repent. We will now take a vote. All in favor of saying this visit did not occur, vote aye. And from the, mouse, the members of the mouse council, there came a tiny but emphatic chorus of eyes. Only one mouse said nothing. The mouse was Despero's father. Lester Chilling had turned his head away from the other members of the mouse council. He was trying to hide his tears. He was crying, reader, because he had been forgiven. Chapter 41, The Tears of a King. Despero found the king in the peas room, sitting in his daughter's bed, clutching the tapestry of her life to his chest. He was weeping. Although weeping, really, is too small a word for the activity that the king was undertaking. Tears were cascading from his eyes. A small puddle had formed at his feet. I am not exaggerating. The king, it seemed, was intent on crying himself a river. Reader, have you ever seen a king cry? When the powerful are made weak, they are revealed to be human. They have hearts. Their uh, diminishment is nothing short of terrifying. And you can be sure that Despero was terrified. Absolutely. But he spoke up anyway. Sir, the mouse said to the king. But the king did not hear him. And as Despero watched, King Philip dropped the tapestry and took his great golden crown from his lap and used it to beat himself over the chest over and over again. The king, as I've already mentioned, had several faults. He was nearsighted. He made ridiculous, unreasonable, and difficult to enforce laws, and much in the way of Migri so, he was not exactly the sharpest knife in the drawer. But there was one extraordinary, wonderful, admirable thing about the king. He was a man who was able and willing to love with the whole of his heart. And just as he loved the queen with the whole of his heart too, he loved his daughter with the whole of it, even more than the whole. He loved the princess P with every particle of his being, and she had been taken from him. And what Despero had come to say to the king had to be said, so he tried again. Excuse me, he said. 
He wasn't certain how a mouse should address a king. Sir did not seem like a big enough word. Despero thought about it for a long moment. He cleared his throat. He spoke loudly, as, he, as loudly as he was capable of speaking. Excuse me, most very honored head person. King Philip stopped beating his crown against his chest. He looked around the room. Down here, most very honored head person, said Despero. The king, tears still falling from his eyes, looked at the floor. He squinted. Is that a bug speaking to me, he said. No, said Despero. I am a mouse. We met before. A mouse, bellowed the king. A mouse is but one step removed from a rat. Sir, said Despero, most very honored head person, please, you have to listen to me. This is important. I know where your daughter is. You do, said the king. He sniffed. He blew his no nose on his royal cloak. Where, he said, as he bent over to look more closely at Despero. One tear, two tears, three enormous king-sized tears fell with an audible plop onto Despero's head and rolled down his back, washing away the white of the flower to reveal his own brown fur. Sir, most very honored head person, sir, said Despero as he wiped the king's tear out of his own eyes. She's in the dungeon. Liars, said the king. And he sat back up. I know it. The rodents are liars and thieves. She is not in the dungeon. My men have searched the dungeon. But no one really knows the dungeon except the rats, sir. There are thousands of places she could be hidden, and only the rats would know. Your men would never be able to find her if the rats did not want her found. Ugh, said the king, and he clapped his hands over his ears. Do not speak to me of rats and what they know, he shouted. Rats are illegal. Rats are against the law. There are no rats in my kingdom. They do not exist. Sir, most very honored head person, that is not true. Hundreds of rats live in the dungeon of the castle. One of them has taken your daughter, and if you will send... The king started humming, I can't hear you. He stopped to shout, I can't hear you. And anyway, what you say is wrong, because you are a rodent, and therefore a liar. He started to hum again, and then he stopped and said, I have hired fortune tellers and a magician. They are coming from a distant land. They will tell me where my beautiful daughter is. They will speak the truth. A mouth, mouse cannot speak the truth. I am telling you the truth, said Despero. I promise. But the king would not listen. He sat with his hands over his ears. He hummed loudly. Big fat tears rolled down his face and fell to the floor. Despero sat and stared at him in dismay. What should he do now? He put a nervous paw up to his neck and pulled at the red thread. And suddenly his dream came flooding back to him. The dark and the light and the knight swinging a sword and the terrible moment when he realized the suit of armor was empty. And then, reader, he stood before the king. A wonderful, amazing thought occurred to the mouse. What if the sumered armor had been empty for a reason? What if it had been empty because it was waiting for him? You know, you know me was what, um, you know me was what the knight in his dream had said. Yes, said Despero. Out loud in wonder, I do know you. I can't hear you, sang the king. <clears throat> I'll have to do it myself, said the mouse. I will be the knight in shining armor. There is no other way. It has to be me. Despero turned. He left the weeping king. He left to find the threadmaster. Ooh, let's see what happens next time. <laughs>